today on Divorce Court. I'm at Divorce Court today because I want the judge to save my marriage. When I first met John, he was sensitive, and now he is insensitive. My biggest issue is I don't get no respect. I don't get the affection that I need for my marriage. If John can't move forward, I have no idea what's going to happen. John doesn't understand my health issues. Melissa, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm here to stay. We'll get through this no matter what. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with John Crescent and Melissa Crescent. The two of you have been together for 10 years, married for two, but you're in trouble now, so you've come to see me. Mr. Crescent, I'm going to start with you. Tell me why you and your wife are in divorce court today. Um, like any relationship, it's been a roller coaster. Right. And uh, right now is to the point where we're like emotionally detached. Okay. There's no uh, physicalness. When did this start to happen? When did things start to fall apart? Um, well, six years into the relationship, she came to me and said she might be pregnant. Uh-huh. So I ran and got a test, brought it back, right. test. She was pregnant, and I was happy about it. I thought she was. We called her parents. We told them. And then uh, a couple of days later, she was going to the doctor. I figured she's going to a prenatal doctor. Mm-hmm. And she wasn't. She was going to the other doctor. Oh, to end the pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. So and did she, she, did she, she discuss it about, about it? it? She, she didn't nope. tell you? I tried to call her, tried to text her. She wouldn't respond. She was doing it. That was that. That was that. Ms. Mrs. Crescent, why don't you tell me your version of what happened? Um, that's not how the situation happened. We talked about what we were going to do, and we explained to each other that we can't afford a baby right now. Did you discuss that you it weren't able to have the baby about, at the time? It might have been talked about, but when she, when she said she was going to the doctor, I thought she was just going to a doctor. Well, what did you, how did the conversation in which you discussed the viability of having a child at well, the time, how did that, that end? It would be rough, you know, at, you know, right now with money and everything, but I figured we'd handle it. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to know what you figured. I want to know what was said. There's a difference. I can tell you what was said. What was said? What was said was that uh, I was high risk for having another baby. Um, my, when I had my first daughter, um, I got a bug clot in my leg, that and I'm a certain out. age. No, this is before. I was a certain age, and I wasn't going to go through that again. It was a health reason. I wasn't going to go through all that. You, and you don't recall hearing any of that? Afterwards, I remember that. Afterwards, you remember that, Afterwards. but you might have been told beforehand. Not, not the part of her health-wise, no. Uh-huh. Did you know about... The, the first pregnancy and the and the complications? Somewhat, but not really. Not really? I heard about it, but... So, now, you know what I see when I look at you? Mm. I see words <laughs> just streaming, streaming over in your direction, just skipping over the top of your head and continuing on over there. I think people tell you things and you don't grasp, or at least she tells you things and you don't hang on to it. You know what I mean? You're not really listening. Got my mind set on something else. Something else and you've decided what it is and you don't really hear what she says. Could be. Did I get that right? Yes. Do you think he still harbors resentment about that? Yes, I do. What makes you say that? Because he throws it in my face every day. I do not. Almost every day. When we fight, it gets brought up. I do not. Does it, get, does it happen when, do, does, do you bring it up when you fight? Remember, I don't remember the last time that it was said. But it was, it said. Do you remember the last time it was said? Probably a month ago. A month ago? No way. Have you ever brought it up in the heat of an argument? Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. Mm -hmm. It might have been said. It might have been said. Yeah, something might have been said. You know what I see? I see words coming out of his mouth, <laughs> and he's not altogether sure which ones they are, and they drift away into the ozone, and he never quite knows what got out. Um, tell me when, even after all this, you decided to get married, right? Yes. But before that, at some point, she just ran off and disappeared? Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, like a year later, she just didn't come home. But she's done it before where she's out with her friends or casinos and, you know, gone for a couple of days. And that's usually what it was. But this time it was different. This time when she came home, she came home with someone else's vehicle. And we got into another, you know, argument about it. And then she just disappeared. Okay. So you just don't trust her. And you have your reasons. 
kind of, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing she's done I mean, done I trust her now, feel... but this is still in the back of my mind of what people are capable of doing, so. Right, yeah. I got you, I got you. Mrs. Crescent, did you, did you walk off without explanation? No. And if so, why? We were breaking up, I was moving out. And I needed another friend's vehicle to get all my things that were outside on the lawn for a moving sale that somebody decided to put outside for me. You put your no. stuff, you put her stuff on the lawn? When she left, she left for a couple days. When she came back, it was with a different vehicle with some guy who was married. And about two weeks later, I put her stuff out on the, on the lawn and told her her stuff's out on the lawn to come get it. Because she wouldn't talk to me, I tried to call her, tried to talk to her, nothing for two weeks. That happened. Then I put her stuff on the yep. lawn. Yeah. And he burned my he burned my jeans in the fire pit. But 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 you were gone for two weeks, went off with some other guy, and you can imagine him being a little yeah, hopped off about it. I mean it's ne it's never right to destroy it wasn't, stuff. It, that wasn't how it happened. It wasn't I was gone for two weeks and come back with a truck. No, that's not how it happened. Yeah, I was it was. No it, But were you off with somebody else? Be honest. I was off with a friend. At that, the time it was a friend. Later on it was it was told that it was a boyfriend. It was different. Did you cheat on him? She don't consider cheating because we're, I moved we're out. together. Yeah. So you were on a break. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that word. <laughs> Just hate it. But we got over it. Yeah. You, apparently, because you later yeah. on you married her. Three months later, after no talking, no contact, basically whatsoever, she came to me. We were we always went to casinos on week on uh, right. special days like Christmases, mm -hmm. you know, holidays. Mm -hmm. Well, Thanksgiving came up. She wanted to go to the casino. She called me up. We went to the casino. We started talking. Um, about a month later, she ended up moving back in. And then I had a vacation coming up. I was going to Vegas. I said, you want to go and get married and continue what we were doing? She agreed. Well, you guys are going to have to explain to me how that happened. <laughs> when you go from burning her stuff in the lawn to marrying her in a couple of months, we're going to figure out what went into that and uh, if you still really trust her. I sense a coldness about you in his direction. I sense a lack of care and not really liking him. You don't really like him, do you? Mr. Crescent, I ask if you really do trust her because she wrote in her paperwork that she believes you're trying to control her. And what happens is when people who don't trust other people, they try to control them. Do you actually trust her? Now I trust her because I guess I was controlling to the point where I'm not, I wasn't gonna let nothing happen again. I was mm -hmm. looking for all the signs that she was doing something wrong. Right. But in the last, you know, year and a half, so she's proven that she's It's gotten better? It's gotten better. It's gotten better. Right. Ms. Cres Mrs. Crescent, do you believe he's still trying to control you? Yes, I know. Tell me what he's doing that makes um, you uncomfortable. Right now, we have, uh, he, he has a phone bill on his phone to where he can see who I call and who calls me and who I text message every day. He has access to look at it. Mm-hmm. So if I need a ride to work, I need to call a friend of mine, he knows about it, and it, it might happen to be a guy friend. Well, he knows a guy friend. He shouldn't have a problem, but he still, you know, says, he makes his comments, oh, you, you called your boyfriend, you had to call this person or that person. I don't need to hear that. Just because you have the vehicle and I have to call a friend, you shouldn't give me static about who I call. Do you give her static about who she calls? Sometimes, yeah. So you kind of don't trust her? No, I trust her. I trust her. Well, what's the static about? Just something she's, to do? <laughs> no, she just gets, I don't know, she's just mad because I, I, well, ever since she found out that I could see the phone bill and see who she calls, she don't use that no more. She don't do it that way. She does it a different way. Okay. Mr. Crescent, she, you say she doesn't love you the way you want her to. What do you mean by that? Um, like the only time she'll kiss me is if I drop off to work. That's about it. That is it. Other than that, there is no, nothing else involved. Well, if you go through what I go through every day, why would you want to be lovey-dovey with somebody? What is, what is it you go through? I go through headache, you know. <laughs> right now, we just found out in April that I have MS. Oh, I'm so, so sorry to hear that. I'm going through a lot of things right now with the medicine, with my, you know, numbness and stuff. It's just, it's, it's a, I mean, and I go to work every day still. 
I've known some people with MS, and it can have different varying degrees. Some of it is very debilitating. Sometimes it's, you know, it can be can be painful. Do you believe that the the absence of romance or loving coincided with her getting MS, or do you believe I think it there are other reasons? You know, something to do with it. But yet, it's been going on before that. Right. It's been going on for a while now. Yeah. I get what you're saying, especially if you're talking about sex and stuff. You just don't feel particularly sexual when you're in pain or you're frightened or all that. But I think he's also talking about a lack of affection, hugging and holding, which which is which I don't think would be precluded by that. I don't know. Right. But you see what I'm saying? Through, when you're going through, you know, the name calling and you know, all all the hate and you know, bringing up the past and throwing things in my face. I don't want to be like that with you. How often does he call you names? It's, what it's kind of constant. what kind of things does he fight, say? You know, he's quick to say that. You know, call me the B word. I you am. know, the C say. word. You know, when we fight, it's all I hear. Well, you know, how often do you fight? We fight daily. D do you guys fight daily? Mm -hmm. What and are you it, fighting about? Do you know the past? But, and not but the, let, let, let him answer. He takes a minute to get there, but we're gonna let him. We're gonna let him answer. What do you think you're fighting about every day? I don't even know what we fight about every day. Give me a for instance. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. I just it's just sometimes we just don't get along. Some days. I got something. Okay. Well, uh, hang on to that. Because we're going to try to figure out why it is you are actually fighting. You know, my mom passed away. On her birthday, I wanted to go to the graveyard. Because you're not going to get all emotional, are you? Well, you're a crybaby. Mrs. Crescent, why do you believe you're actually fighting? Because there's not enough affection. That's why he fights with me, because I don't... He, I don't True. give him what he wants. I don't give him the sex every day he wants. Um, really, I'm 42 years old. Right now, I'm not, you know, I don't feel that pretty to be doing everything you want me to do, and I'm sorry, I just... So is it a sex thing or an affection thing? The lack of sex, yeah. Both. Lack of sex, both. Yep. And do, you, do you talk to her about it every day? I do. I do. So that's what you're fighting about. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> there yep. you go. You know, you know, Mr. Chris, I don't Just, think I don't, you're paying she attention. Don't pay me, she don't even pay me any attention. She, you know, she won't even, she walk by and not even look at me, not even look my way. She'll talk to me without looking at and me. And what's wrong with that? We live in the same house. I'm in the other room. He's like, you're blowing me off. I sense a coldness about you in his direction. I sense a lack of care. And I think it's, the illness is one thing, but you're not really liking him. No. I'm, Can I tell you something? Get, let, 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 let me get to the... You don't really like him, do you? After all this time, he just makes me so mad. I love not, him, but he makes me mad, and that mad trumps that love. Oh, I'm mad at Trump's I love. Just, what are you mad about? Just all the things he's done in the past to me. Give me some examples. He burned my clothes, you know? I heard he, that one already. He, uh, what's some things he's just, oh, he, there's so many things, but you got me on the spot right now. Oh. Well, let me, he wants to say something. I Get it together. Something. Okay, go ahead. I got something. <laughs> friends were over, and they wanted to know his friends, what well, should be my friends, too, but friends were over wanted to know what was going on with me with my sickness. He said, you know, enough with the MS already. Really? They wanted to know what was going on, and he's got that kind of comment? It Are wasn't you, all like that. It wasn't like that? It wasn't all like that. It wasn't like, how, what was it like? I don't even remember, I don't even remember what she's talking about, but. <laughs> well, that, but that's your but, problem, but no, though. That's was, you. It wasn't like that. <laughs> that, that. That's you, what did you want to say to me before? I, I interrupted well, you. said you. that she's cold. Yeah, she is cold. You know, my mom passed away. Uh-huh. On her birthday, I wanted to go to the graveyard. I told her to come with me. She said, you're not gonna get all emotional, are you? I'm like, it's my mom's grave, what do you think? Well, you're a crybaby. I said, really? And she didn't go. I had to go by myself. Did that conversation occur? We talked about three days after that. That conversation occurred. I just assumed he'd go by himself, have his time with his mom. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be there for me. But if he asked you to go. And he knew when he asked me that right then and there, I, I wasn't too. ready to I go. I knew you then. wouldn't go with me. He, he can see what, what's going on, and he knows it started a fight, and that's probably what he wanted to begin with, is me not to go. So he starts a no, fight. No, I always hoped that you would. What made you believe that she wouldn't but right I before just, you asked I, her? I, just, I know how she is. I know how she is. I just knew she wouldn't do it. So why even ask? Just go. 
if there's one thing I could get him to give you to, 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 to chip some of that ice off, what would it be? What does he need to change? Um, not, not to just, just not to, I mean, he knows I love him, but I mean, why do you gotta be all, you know, why do you need all that affection and all that, I mean. Cause I like it. Just a hug, just a kiss now and then. I Out got of the blue it. for no reason. It isn't, yeah, but it's every, every minute, you know. It's not every minute. If, you know, heaven forbid if I'm doing laundry or something and it takes me a little bit longer because I'm doing it right and I'm not just throwing the stuff over. I, I, I think I see what's happening here. Let me tell you what I think I see. Divorce Court will be right back. There's sex and there's affection. I don't know what really happened in the past 10 years, but you are over him. You love him, but he gets on your last nerve. You don't like him anymore. And, 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 and that lack of like shows up. I always tell guys, five minute foreplay, you know, you can tell somebody and make somebody feel love five minutes a day, a peck on the cheek here, a hug there, this and that. And I don't think you're looking to do any of that because you just don't feel that way towards him anymore. What do you think? I think you're right. If you really want her, you can't bludgeon her into becoming affectionate. You have to give her what she needs and extend yourself and be, uh, and be kind and loving and thoughtful to her in a chance that it might work. I don't know if it will or not because we got a big block of ice over there. That's right, I'll chip at it. Yeah, but you have to, you, if what you're doing isn't working, which is getting mad at her, calling her the C word and the B word, and you know, you know, a hundred nice words and then, that, then, then you, you pop out with that C word, kind of erases it all. You, if you're kind to her and loving and you've done everything, before you call this marriage a day, I want you to be able to sit down and sit back and say, you know, I did every friggin' thing I could think of to make this happen. I was kind, I, I left no stone unturned. And if she's still icy and frosty, then you can walk away feeling good about what you tried to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep. Because you're the one that wants it to change, you're the one that's got to change. I know sometimes it can get, it can get dark in a marriage. And I think it got dark for you. If he can turn the lights back on, maybe you can find your way to enjoy your marriage again. Do you understand what I'm saying? Things can change. Things can change. They're not obligated to change, but he wants them to change. And just be open to the possibility. That's all I'm saying. And I wish you well with, with, your, with your medical issues. This matter is adjourned. How do you plan to, to step up here? I'm not over it completely. Like she said, just, I just, if he could just try a little harder and I'll, I'll be there to try to. Do you think the advice that Judge Lynn gave her kind of got through? Yeah. Um, we got a lot to work on. Right. But we're not going nowhere. Mm -hmm. We'll be together. Okay. We'll figure it out.